I mentioned that Connected has been held over the, uh, this is the eighth year. And we realized that there are some people who've actually attended all the Connected conferences. And now that undying um, support is really, really important to us. So if there's anyone in the room, or you know anyone who's actually been to all the Connected summits, please um, ask them to get in touch. We we like to support those people who actually support us. So I'd like to invite Mr. Malu to uh, take over the next session. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Gwyneth. I'd like to invite uh, my panel. Uh, starting with uh, Mr. Fidelis Muya. Uh, Mr. Muya is a technical director at the Kenya Bankers uh, Association and uh, he'll be telling us a little bit about himself before we start the session. Um, also want to invite Mr. Dr. Eno Kinara, who is a postmaster general. Uh, Mr. Harry Mwangi, the acting head of government digital payments. And Mr. Chalo, who is the, the Director General Accounting and ICT Services at the National Treasury. And the subject we are going to be discussing this morning is a national billing uh, system. And I just want to begin, first of all, by thanking my panelists uh, for making time to be here uh, this morning. And I'm going to begin with uh, Mr. Fidelis uh, Muya. Uh, if your microphone is working, you can just uh, introduce yourself. And uh, maybe just a little background. Uh, there was a MasterCard study that was uh, done in 2013, and it stated that the key challenge facing the Kenya payment system is we do not have e efficient enough, we are not efficient enough to produce economies of scale and low prices necessary for a broad adoption of electronic uh, payments. And the panel will discuss policy recommendations that can be adopted to promote efficiency and competition in the current uh, payment uh, system. So we'll start with Mr. Uh, Muya. If you could first introduce yourself, give us a few uh, comments about your background, and then uh, we'll give you uh, f five minutes to give us your views. Thank you. Thank you, Victor. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, my name, is, as uh, you've been told, uh, is Fidelis Muya. Um, currently, I'm working as the Director of Technical Services with the Kenya Bankers Association. My background is um, IT systems. I started as a programmer and worked through, and so far, I've moved into technical after getting too old to program. So now I'm in uh, management, what we call in suits. Essentially, um, at KBA, we work to enhance efficiency within the banking system, develop standards for banking, and look at ways we can reduce the cost of banking services through interoperability. And um, along with this, we've quite, uh, got quite a number of things that have modernized payments. And as we speak, we are in the process of implementing one of the initiatives that I'll be talking about later. But through the times, we've modernized payments from checks through check clearing up to check truncation. We've got other systems uh, that we've modernized, and this is all towards making sure that the cost of services and cost of transactions are lowered. Um, in line with what we are discussing today, uh, we are looking at efficiency of payments, uh, pricing, and electronic end-to-end -end payments. I must say this cannot be achieved without several key factors. The first is interoperability. Systems must be able to interoperate so that uh, you don't have an efficient system within a silo. For example, a mobile payment system that is efficient, but at the end of the day, it is still converted to cash so that the customer then can transact. So, uh, for example, in today's era, you can actually do a mobile payment of money from Mombasa to maybe Kitale in 45 seconds. The money will have been moved to Kitale. But for that person to use that money, they still have to look for physical cash, translate it into cash for it to transact because either the retailer at the end of the chain is not digital, so it has to convert to physical cash. So that is one issue. We need to really have an interoperable system 
that interoperability can then facilitate end-to-end -end transactions. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Um, uh, Dr. Kinara, maybe you could introduce yourself and then uh, give us your opening remarks, your five minutes. Thank you, Victor. Uh, <coughs> I want to, first of all, say good morning to all of you. Uh, my name is Enoch Kinara. I'm the Postmaster General. I'm glad to be here this morning. The Postal Corporation of Kenya, that is popularly known as POSTA, was created by an Act of Parliament 1998 and we were operationalized in 1999, July 1. Part of our mandate is to provide uh, distribution and communication, which uh, we have mostly been doing the letter and parcel business, and we also have the financial services side. We have uh, tried to stick within the accepted global postal products. And recently in Kenya, because of the dynamism in the markets that we operate in, we now have very many other products, especially those that are based on uh, ICT. Now, um, we are a traditional uh, organization that has been dealing in money matters for a long time. In fact, if a good number of you recall, banking may have begun from the post office. Also, uh, the communications that we have now in the form they are was also, um, we are the mother of all this. But you may also note that we have been left behind very greatly I want to say that because of that uh, nature of our business, we currently collect about 10 billion uh, Kenya shillings per month, and we make payments for the same. We have over 3,000 locations in the world, but ours in Kenya is, uh, is about six, uh, 623. We have the traditional money orders. We have the electronic version. In fact, we were the first to to, to take on this first through the telegraphic money order, then to uh, the poster pay, which came just before MPESA did. So EFT services, we have been on it for some time now. We also do intermediary, financial intermediary services. We act in between uh, the, 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 those who pay and those who receive. Uh, we also, uh, therefore, have uh, quite a, a big portfolio of agency services. Then we will continue to act, and we are developing a system, an electronic system, where we are going to act for both uh, the, 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 the institutions that want uh, bills to be paid and those who intend to, to pay the bills, so that we handle all that at one point, so long as you have given us instructions to, ha to manage that account for you. We will receive the bill electronically. Mm -hmm. We will debit your account mm -hmm. and pay your bills. Mm -hmm. This is something that uh, is, is, is very advanced and uh, we hope to have this uh, launched uh, any time. We want to work with the banks. We are already uh, in discussion with the seven banks that we, we, we have brought on board to be able to uh, you know, manage their customers' accounts who, those who want to, to, to give us that job of managing the bills for them, from uh, receiving them to paying them, and, 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 and you know, notifying them that we have paid the bills, okay. so that they don't have to physically uh, be going to queue to be able to pay. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, I now want to introduce uh, Mr. Mwangi. Mr. Mwangi is the acting head of government uh, digital payments, and uh, he has a PowerPoint uh, presentation. If you could put it up for him, and uh, he'll, he'll speak from here. So you have five minutes. Yeah, I'm going to take you uh, through the journey. Uh, Kenya is largely a cash-based economy, uh, other than the growth within the mobile money sector, 
uh, a lot of our transactions are cash-based uh, across. Uh, another aspect that uh, contributed to this initiative was the fact that uh, when it comes to government delivery, most of us make payments in cash. Uh, receipts are difficult uh, to validate. And then the payment points as well as the service points are disparate. There was also uh, a phenomenon which we discovered that uh, not everybody knows about uh, the services that government provides. So I would uh, want to get a service from government and uh, I don't know how much it costs. I do not even know where to get it. Uh, and this again brought in, into perspective middlemen, brokers, you know, friends that we use to assist us gain government services. There are also very low levels of uh, automating the invoicing cycle. So you'll go to a hospital and you'll find a lot of uh, manual receipts. You'll also find a lot of uh, cashiers. So one hand does not know what the other hand is doing. And for you to get service from one entity, you have to prove that you had made payment elsewhere. Typically in government, uh, this is how payments work. Uh, it's either through cash, checks, which are bankers' checks, over the counter, banking, where you bank money in a bank account and then you take the banking slip to the MDA, uh, Ministry, Department, or Agency. The ministry then has to take their money into a commercial bank and then push that money to central bank eventually. But when you look at the successes we've had with mobile money and digital payments, government has not leveraged that in any way. We also do not accept uh, credit cards across board. You'll find one MDA here and another uh, accepting payments electronically. We are currently engaged with the following uh, MDAs. NTSA uh, is 100%. Uh, uh, most of their services are now online. They are accepting digital payments. The same with the Department of Immigration. Ministry of Lands is coming along. Uh, from 1st of March, all land rents are uh, payable through uh, electronically. Uh, the same as stamp duty, both within the Office of the AG and the Ministry of Lands. Uh, CRS, which is civil registration, birth certificate, death certificates are available online, Mombasa County. Ministry of Mining, there are various uh, mining permits. Within the National Police Service, we are looking at bringing on board uh, instant fines, uh, especially traffic fines, so that at least uh, you are billed on the roadside, you get an SMS and an email, you are able to settle your funds within six, seven days. Uh, the judiciary, and uh, we're also working on uh, other initiatives such as ease of doing business, which will allow uh, you to register a business, register for uh, NSSF, NHIF, uh, business permits within a day. There is other initiatives such as Emma Kiba, which now will uh, open government securities to individuals. And uh, also within National Police Service, there is the issue of uh, the clearance certificate, which now is provided manually. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mwangi. Um, maybe just, just one question, and I'm, I'm excited to see I may receive my, an invoice from the government through email sometime soon. What can the citizen do to, to bring this um, date a bit closer? Currently, for all services offered online uh, or through eCitizen, uh, you, you receive your email, you receive your invoice via email. Mm -hmm. The idea is to ensure that across board, there are some of the challenges that are brought up earlier of infrastructure, mm -hmm. uh, the geography span of government. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the way to look at it is to ensure that each and every government office has power, uh, comms, and they're in a position to provide the services. The biggest challenge also we have is the fact that uh, there is a lack of knowledge on, on the part of citizens. Not all services are blatantly clear. Mm -hmm. Not everybody is, uh, is able to know where to get what service. But so far, those that have gone online, we've got over 1.5 million Kenyans registered. So there is a huge number that has received uh, invoices electronically. But we're still a long way away from the universal invoicing for all services in government. Thank you, thank you very much. 
Um, I now want to invite uh, Mr. Chalo. Mr. Chalo is the Director General Accounting and uh, ICT Services at the National uh, Treasury uh, to make, uh, you know, introduce himself and uh, give us uh, his uh, five minute uh, presentation on this topic. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I just want to make some uh, correction there. I'm sitting here for the Director General Accounting Services. Uh, as you have heard, my name is Chalo. I've worked in IFMIS. I've been there, I would say I've been born there, and uh, I think I'll retire there because I love uh, that place. Uh, in IFMIS, we have, do, we, 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 we have been doing quite a number of things uh, since we started, and um, uh, we are implementing the public uh, fund reform uh, to promote accountability, uh, transparent, and effective way on public funds. We have implemented a quite of number of modules in, from end-to-end -end process. We have reviewed our business process as, co as compared to the government way. We have implemented plan to budget, which is a module which uh, gives uh, 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 opportunity for the public officers to do uh, budget from uh, sector level to program based, and now you're moving up to the project level uh, in this uh, coming financial year of 2016-2017. Uh, we also done some uh, procure to pay module. Uh, we have done it on all the MDS and uh, we all the counties, and also we are moving to, uh, to the parastatos. And we are bringing a very, very unique element here on this procure to pay. We are promoting competition and fairness in doing government business through sourcing. We have done also revenue to cash as a model which requires you to collect all the revenue and report it back to the government. We have done communi communication to change and also ICT to support. As I indicated that earlier that we are hope, uh, we have put our presence in all the MDS, that is the uh, ministries and commissions. And also we have moved to the all counties, I think we have seen us. We are also moving to, uh, to the parastatos on e-procurement. A quite of number of things now right now we are doing. We are reviewing guidelines as compared to the e-procurement uh, uh, based on the public uh, procurement and asset disposal act 2015. I don't know whether you know that act is out. And for those who don't know, please check how it's said. Because we want to bring the high city component now in the procurement, in full cycle of the procurement. We are doing integrations with the government uh, entities, uh, levels like KRA. We want to get all the information of the KRA uh, being reported to the one uh, platform, all the agrees, human resources, pension. I think pension has been an headache, but we are working on that integration, bringing it back to the IFMIS to be able to have a one point of uh, reporting. We are integrating with the Central Bank of Kenya as you know, it's a payment gateway for the all government transactions go pass through the, the Central Bank of Kenya. And again, we're also doing a promise, uh, which is deals with the projects. And I want to tell you guys, <coughs> all this uh, work cannot be done without a spirit and the attitude of determination. And it's true that I must say to you that we must put in our mind that We'll have to ride the waves without getting wet. Well, you know that when you're in the sea, you must get wet. But that determination and positive attitude is the one which will make us move forward. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chalo. We've learned that we, we have to ride the sea without getting wet. Thank you. Um, I just want to have a discussion now with the panel. Um, and I want to pose a question to them. Uh, and I'll give each of them just two and a half minutes to, to respond. Um, and the question is, what interventions are needed to deepen non-cash transactions in Kenya? What interventions are needed to deepen non-cash transactions? And I'll take away two options. One is interoperability, which Mr. Muya has already mentioned. The other one for me is uh, street addresses. I think we need to have street addresses uh, to, to encourage e-commerce so that courier companies can 
be able to locate uh, 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 individuals or corporations uh, fairly uh, efficiently. Uh, but I would like, from a policy point of view, what would you recommend uh, that can be done to improve uh, uh, non-cash? Because as you, as you recall, the study found we do not have enough non-cash transactions and we need to have more so that we can create economies of, of scale. And I'll start with Mr. Muya, who was uh, first to, to present. Thank you, Victor. Um, to promote low cash or non cash uh, economy, we actually need the very bottom of the pyramid in the payments arena to be digital. And um, this you are looking at, for example, if it is at the corner shop, uh, the mamamboga in the supermarket, or rather the local markets, for example, every market, you actually need to facilitate them the ability to digitally transact. And in addition to the mobile phone, which currently is available, you then need to have a low cost uh, acquiring device. So we are looking at um, mobile emphasis or something like that, that is one, very cheap, two, is not complicated to use, it's very, very simple, so that even the 20, 50 shilling transaction can actually be done digitally. Mm -hmm. If we can do that, then we will be in a position to start looking at a cash light society that actually works. Right now, all the things we are talking about are reasonably high level payments, mm -hmm. and people who can do those payments actually can afford quite high devices. But if we really need to kill the 95% we are talking about, mm -hmm. then we really need very, very low cost um, acquisition devices. Mm. And, and from a policy perspective, what do you believe the government can do to promote uh, this cash light uh, uh, economy? Well, there are two things. Number one is um, uh, the painful one. Uh, just when we were looking at introducing digital payments, the government slapped a 10% um, excise duty on it. So it's effectively the transactions went up by 10%, which then, of course, did not give an incentive for that. Mm -hmm. So we really need to marry the policy perspective mm -hmm. to the initiatives that we are doing. So for example, if we are introducing a system for low cost devices, mm -hmm. we are looking at, can we actually subsidize them? Mm -hmm. Can we zero rate them or do something to ensure that people have an uptake of them? Mm -hmm. And then look at how do we incentivize the merchants mm -hmm. to actually do uh, the acceptance. Because right now, everybody believes cash is free. Mm -hmm. So when you are looking at, do I do a mobile transaction vis-a-vis -a, -vis a cash transaction, mm -hmm. the misconception is cash is free, so I don't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. But when you look at it, really cash is very expensive because you have to move cash, you have to deploy CIT vehicles to uh, look at the movement of that cash securely. Mm -hmm. You look at the safety of the individuals as you carry cash, you can be mugged and lose it and all that. Mm -hmm. So really it's not free, but people have this mis misconception that it is free. So we need to marry the policy directive that we are trying to achieve a digital economy vis-a-vis mm -hmm. -vis the policy initiatives that will then give the users mm -hmm. the incentive to actually carry out that uh, particular initiative. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Kinar? <coughs> thank you, thank you once again. Um, I think first uh, we need to have an all-encompassing national payment system. As it is now, it is, it is like the national payment system that is being developed is keeping away those who uh, are at the lower end, the underbanked and the unbanked, those who we are act actually targeting to be able to, uh, to, to get uh, especially uh, government services mm -hmm. closer to them. Uh, they, 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 they are literally being encouraged by the current uh, uh, regime of the national payment system mm -hmm. to go only cash. They have not been encouraged to move, uh, migrate to the digital side where we will go cashless. Mm -hmm. So there are uh, legal issues there, there are regulatory issues. Mm -hmm. uh, as, as we speak now, uh, the, 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 the national payment system has focused more on the commercial banks. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, we are, uh, and his institution, mm -hmm. I think are developing, together with the central bank, they are developing uh, a, 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 a national switch mm -hmm. that uh, is basically owned by the banks. Mm -hmm. 
What about those all other financial intermediaries mm -hmm. who actually are the main people who do the smaller transactions? Mm -hmm. What is going to happen to them? We are going to leave them out mm -hmm. uh, of, 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 of going cashless. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to address that. Mm -hmm. uh, those are regulatory and legal issues. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we need to encourage the role of uh, financial intermediaries. Mm -hmm. The Postal Corporation of Kenya, for example, is spread all over this country. But uh, the regulations that exist uh, do not uh, recognize uh, uh, the, the financial intermediaries uh, to, 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 to recognize their role so that uh, you know, it can then deepen uh, the, 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 the cashless efforts that we want to get into. The CPK as a regulator, I believe, uh, should um, as much as possible remain a regulator shouldn't get too much into the operational issues of, for instance, uh, getting into bringing about a national switch. Mm -hmm. That should be left to the players, or probably the government would uh, take up that so that you know it's not, because if you look at commercial banks, truth be told, mm -hmm. they are privateering uh, organizations. Mm -hmm. They will want to do everything mm -hmm. with the profit in mind. Mm -hmm. uh, the, if the government took the role of uh, installing a system mm -hmm. uh, that uh, could then serve everybody, mm -hmm. the profits probably could come last. And that cannot be entrusted to uh, profit-making uh, uh, companies. Mm -hmm. the, the role of the private sector and the public sector is, 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 is very, very important here. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the, the regulations that are going to apply should apply across board to be able to, to get all of them on board. Now, I just wanted to add uh, one more thing mm -hmm. about um, the payment media. Mm -hmm. He mentioned about uh, uh, you know, getting POSs. If you go to Bangladesh, mm -hmm. in the market, in a normal market, mm -hmm. you will find the vendors there actually carrying a POS terminal mm -hmm. so that those who come to buy vegetables, tomatoes, and so on, mm -hmm. have a card. Mm -hmm. Who's going to provide this card? How much is it going to cost them? Mm -hmm. That is one thing that can only be done with a motivation of getting everybody to have a card that can be used on these POSs mm -hmm. without having to cost too much. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the cost of financial transactions Regulations should come mm -hmm. that will be able to address the issue of reducing the cost of financial transactions so that we can get to the lowest of, uh, of the low uh, income uh, Kenyans. Mm -hmm. um, we, we then have other uh, payment instruments mm -hmm. that uh, have been completely ignored mm -hmm. uh, by the, 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 the high level uh, the central bank, for instance, is looking at how to regulate the, the general industry on financial services and payment mm -hmm. industry. So we want to encourage that the central bank goes down to look at even the small uh, uh, customers of, 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 of these services mm -hmm. so that they can afford probably a five shilling, 10 shilling a financial transaction will encourage everybody to come on board. Mm -hmm. So I just want to say that it is important that we have regulations, we have uh, a regime, a regulatory regime that encourages all these transactions to go cashless, mm -hmm. but most importantly, to also recognize that it must be all encompassing. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, I'll give uh, Pro probably one thing I, sure. just, I left out about uh, mm -hmm. the, the ad national addressing mm -hmm. that will bring about uh, physical addresses to spur growth in the e-commerce area. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I know my CS is here mm -hmm. and. Uh, Yes, I, I uh, took that option away. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, I, I, it is very important that we, we actually look at uh, national addressing, just like we do with our, our national roads, just like we do with the hospitals, just like we do with all this other infrastructure. Mm -hmm. I think we haven't given it the, the punch that it's required from the policy point of view, mm -hmm. from the government side, mm -hmm. that it is equally important to develop a robust national addressing system from the national government level. Because I know the counties will always want to do their thing and then we may have uh, 47 or 48 different systems mm -hmm. if we don't have the national government to take full charge of that. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy to, to note that uh, 
already something is happening. We just need that when that is happening, mm -hmm. the budget side mm -hmm. should also accompany that which is happening. I mm -hmm. think that has been the big problem. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of projects that are taking billions of shillings mm -hmm. and we have actually ignored the, the, the issue of national addressing. The moment that works, you will see the difference in terms of uh, investors coming in, in terms of uh, the, the, the e-commerce growing with the speed that we have not seen before. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, before moving to the next panelist, I'll give uh, Mr. Muya just two minutes to respond on the issue of the national switch mm -hmm. and why the bank uh, felt it was necessary to step in and, uh, and develop this project. Okay, thank you, Victor. Um, we need to, before I answer that, mm -hmm. um, clarify. I didn't see Central Bank here, but I can probably in inform the meeting about the NPS Act. Mm -hmm. Under the NPS Act, the Central Bank is the <coughs> body that is given the power to regulate the payments industry. Now, the payments industry is more than the banking industry. Payments industry now has a lot of other players besides the banking industry. But um, to put that in perspective, all persons or in this case, persons is legal persons and uh, organizations and natural persons intending to run a payment system. It must either be licensed, authorized, or approved by the central bank before you actually start operation. Now, that is legal. And the central bank national payments department is the department that is charged with actually licensing, authorizing, and approving such payment systems. When we looked at the national payments uh, strategy, because we developed that together with the central bank to make sure that we guide the industry in developing the payments, we looked at several different factors that will then facilitate this. And we came up with a strategy and a framework under which we will develop the payments industry. The first is the study that was done by MasterCard on national payments policy that advised the central bank on the policy that led to the NPS Act. The first one was central bank should focus on one, security, uh, both security in terms of system security and settlement security. That is the risk in terms of the payment systems risk. The second is to ensure that the government through the central bank manages the high volume or high value transactions. These are the RTGS systems and that's why CAPS is managed by the central bank as one of the biggest high value because it has a high impact on the economy. Then the third policy directive was that they should let the retail systems be managed by the players through a self-regulatory mechanism. And we have in that act an arrangement where players can come together under what is known as a payment services management body to self-regulate. So the central bank will delegate regulatory powers to that PSMB to ensure that players self-regulate and you can compete on an even kill. Having done that, we looked at then how do we manage the biggest risk of all in the payment system, and that's the settlement risk. When you look at all the payments in the country, eventually these payments, the money has to end up in a bank account. So to manage the settlement and the quick flow and movement of that money through bank accounts, we agreed to set up a national switch, which will then integrate all these banks together. The idea behind this is that so that a player who's playing in the payments industry doesn't have to have a settlement mechanism. If you look at before the NPS Act came through, if you are transacting through a mobile network uh, system, for example, M-Pesa, they had to have a settlement trust where this money that is in the system is kept in a trust fund that is segregated from the original payma, payments or provider. The same with the switches. Can switch had to have a settlement trust. Mm -hmm. Then. The other next payments was Paynet, which is now called InterSwitch. They had to come up with another settlement trust. Uh, Airtel has a similar payment trust. And Orange has a similar payment trust. When you look at the net effect of this in the economy, is you are tying a lot of money in these trusts, number one. So money that could be circulating within the economy is actually sitting in a trust. Um, it is not being used for the purposes <coughs> of anything other than sitting in a trust, number one. Number two, there is a cost to that. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the transaction cost element of all this multiplicity of trusts, those costs are then factored into the transaction cost. So one of the biggest drivers of these costs is that as more people come up with payment systems, 
more trusts will come through and that cost will be borne by the local mono entity. Mm -hmm. So what we are looking at is having a system that does not need to replicate a settlement system that is in existence. And the banking system through the central bank has an elaborate settlement system. So this switch we are putting in place is to facilitate such a system without having to have a trust. Because if money is sitting in my bank account and my bank can settle with the other 43 banks already in place, all a settlement payment system player has to do is to link to a bank and channel all these payments through his bank account. Mm -hmm. And in 45 seconds, I can move money from my payment system in Kuala mm -hmm. to a, a payment system in Eldore mm -hmm. electronically through the banking system and settlement happens at the end of the day at the central bank. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to have a separate trust account. The money moves from your bank account to the other bank account electronically. And in 45 seconds, I can actually pay anybody within the country as long as they have a bank account in 45 seconds. Mm -hmm. Once we achieve that, then we remove the need of all these settlement systems the need to have money outside the financial system that is not circulating, that is not being reinvested, and therefore efficiency is the, is the factor mm -hmm. that we will then introduce. And all you then need to do is link your payment system to a bank, then you do KYC, everybody knows who it is, we have digital track of all these payments, and efficiency becomes the driver, and therefore the low cost transaction can actually be achieved. Mm -hmm. So I think that is the concept behind why we are putting this switch in, and all banks then participate to facilitate everybody open access to the national payment system. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Moya. Uh, Mr. Mwangi, uh, just a, a reminder, the question is what interventions are needed to deepen non-cash uh, transactions in, in Kenya? Well, <coughs> the interesting aspects about Kenya is that uh, despite not being fully digital, we are the leading company when it comes to digital payments. One of the interesting facts is that uh, the economy is largely informal. Uh, and if you look at the leading or where we spend our money most from government, healthcare, schools, mm -hmm. transport, agriculture, all these sectors are largely cash based. So for inputs, for payments, either inwards or outward, if you look at farmers, they have to spend cash to to participate in the economy. Uh, PMG and Fidelis also mentioned uh, the merchant side. One of the challenges that I've found is that if you look at organizations uh, such as uh, government or in the transport sector, where initiatives have come on board to try and digitize some of these payments, the challenge has been uh, it's not a plug and play scenario. Mm -hmm. You might have within the transport sector various players, circles, vehicle owners, and when you introduce the digital payment side, the settlement at the end, the risk, it takes much longer for the owner of the vehicles or the operator to get their money. If you look at, uh, for instance, government, you have thousands and thousands of offices across board, uh, enabling each and every government officer, wherever they are, to receive payments uh, is heavy lifting. You will need to invest in uh, so much infrastructure and uh, education, and also the fact that uh, the back end where the settlement comes in, where the settlement risks are being brought up, uh, we still do not have a mature enough uh, system where you can demarcate these funds and push them in the various uh, destination accounts. Mm -hmm. uh, there is need to formalize uh, the informal sector. If you look at our everyday, we, uh, Mamamboga, there is uh, the barber, the hairstylist, whoever it is, your mechanic. They, we have a perception that it is cheaper to pay in cash. And uh, for them, there is no incentive for them to digitize. The cost of the POS is high. Uh, we also have this issue around uh, fear of uh, going formal. In, uh, there is the tax man, there are the regulators. You might not have this license, you might not have that permit. Mm -hmm. So there is a huge, huge need to educate even the merchants, on the benefits of uh, formalizing. Uh, for instance, you've been in business for a while. However, you do not have any bank records. You do not exist in any government system. So even accessing credit becomes a challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, in areas such as professional services, people do not have indemnity insurance. 
uh, you have a plumber comes to your house. Uh, the arrangement is quite informal. At the end of the job, uh, you give him his uh, few hundred shillings, but if you have a problem that recurs, there is no recourse for you. Mm -hmm. So we have a huge, huge uh, army of uh, informal players mm -hmm. who we engage from time to time. Mm -hmm. And uh, because of the structure of banking, despite them transacting on a day-to-day -day basis when it comes to money transfer, they are unable to engage formally as uh, merchants where they can uh, have merchant accounts, POSs, et cetera, receipt formally. And uh, the, the policy, or I think on the government side, does not seem to facilitate. Mm -hmm. I think we had an initiative earlier, uh, about 10 years ago, around the ETR, the Electronic mm -hmm. Tax Register. Mm -hmm. And uh, with the right incentives, that was adopted across board mm -hmm. by a lot of businesses. Uh, the interesting part was government did not participate in that. So uh, we did not take that opportunity to digitize all of government entities. So from lands offices to health centers to schools, mm -hmm. uh, where we spend most of our money, mm -hmm. and even the, the players within that sector, those are still largely mm -hmm. uh, cash-based. Mm -hmm. So there is need to look at uh, broad-based incentives from the players in the banking sector, uh, where they can support the mamambogas, acquire POSs at a very low cost, and then also on the banking charges. Uh, typically, if you're paying your plumber or provider, uh, we have the, the classic tumaya uh, kutoa, because they perceive that to be another expense over and above their input for that service. So there is need to ensure that some of these uh, costs are eliminated for the merchant. Uh, acceptance of digital money becomes uh, fairly attractive. Mm -hmm. And eventually, you will find that, you know, everybody understands the benefits. They just do not see why mm -hmm. they need to digitize their operations. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe just one. Do you think, do you feel that uh, forgiveness may be part of the process where government says if you've been transacting without declaring some of these transactions, we will, you know, we'll only look forward, we will not look backwards at your records. Uh, the, the amnesty is one of the incentives that government can use. However, uh, there is a whole area of transparency and also where people feel victimized. Uh, I could run a business for 10 years. Mm -hmm. My turnover has never hit a million, mm -hmm. but I have this uh, person in front of me asking me, for a million just for compliance. Mm -hmm. So the, with this push to have a lot of uh, licenses, services online, in uh, non-personal, uh, it is possible for you to register a business mm -hmm. uh, without having to know anyone, mm -hmm. uh, pay for your licenses on time, pay for any fines, mm -hmm. and uh, operate legally without being harassed by the authorities mm -hmm. um, when you're running a business. The amnesty side uh, does not entirely mm -hmm. uh, help mm -hmm. because there are people who feel they have been uh, brought into this basket. Say, for instance, the issue around uh, landlords, for instance. You may have been paying tax in another regime. Mm -hmm. So the incentive of an amnesty does not, you know, you're still being painted with the same uh, white brush, yet you've been complying over a period of time. Mm -hmm. So I think there is uh, the other whole host of incentives from the banking sector mm -hmm. uh, that can, I mean, the security side, mm -hmm. cash handling mm -hmm. uh, is a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, ensuring that uh, compliance, things like VAT refunds are mm -hmm. uh, in a timely manner that can contribute to bringing more people into the uh, formal sector. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Mwangi. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Chalo, again, just a quick reminder. The question is, what in interventions are needed to deepen non-cash transactions? Uh, thank you very much. Eh? As I was looking for this, ca this case study for MasterCard, mm -hmm. I realized they were talking about high volume mm -hmm. with low value. value. Mm -hmm. And they're saying there was a lot of uh, big number of uh, transactions with low value. Mm -hmm. and there was a growth, 40% growth pattern in the remote transactions. Mm -hmm. But the one thing I realized they didn't check mm -hmm. is what? They would have considered about the users who are the majority of what they are saying. Mm -hmm. Users, they have a kind of a typical kind of a behavior of expenditure. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and the users will feel that they are being restricted by moving away from the current mm -hmm. space. Mm -hmm. So one thing they would understand and check about this mm -hmm. is that they would have implemented a system based on the behavior of the users, mm -hmm. so that the users will move on and accept mm -hmm. all these technologies. Mm -hmm. They don't feel isolated or left, or they don't feel like they are being denied in their right. Mm -hmm. So the behavior of the users is very critical at this level. Mm -hmm. The other thing we would also be checking is about the competition. Mm -hmm. Don't forget competition is very important. Mm -hmm. Even in our current kind of environment where we have uh, several uh, subscribers for the different networks, mm -hmm. you will get that you can call this one, I would be calling a three shillings or this one. Mm -hmm. So the competition is very critical to this kind of environment that we'll be able to open up and let uh, our more players to come in so that the users can be able to benefit. Mm -hmm. Information as indicated is also very important. People, they need to be educated about this kind of questions. Mm -hmm. They don't need to be taken for granted. Because unless you convince them that this is the way to go, mm -hmm. and what are the benefits inside this kind of a platform? Mm -hmm. For example, we talk about 1963 kind of the Madrid thing, whereby you just want to come with a card. You don't have money, so you are not uh, uh, inviting kind of the security in your pocket. Mm -hmm. So the users need to also to be educated very much to be able what is going on. Mm -hmm. The interchangeable fee, mm -hmm. it's something which never came out clear. And as far as we are seated on, mm -hmm. you need to also to inform them when you do this transaction, mm -hmm. what are the costs. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine carrying my credit card mm -hmm. to go to the market to buy a hunger. Mm -hmm. A packet of hunger is costing seven shillings. Mm -hmm. And on top of it, there is five shillings also for the transaction. Mm -hmm. I would prefer to go buy this with my money. Mm -hmm. So this kind of the fee also needs also to be kind of uh, uh, reduced. Mm -hmm. uh, on the government side, adopting the cashless is not that much mm -hmm. difficult mm -hmm. because I need to trace the history of where we started doing the GPA mm -hmm. with the Central Bank of Kenya, and I don't know what they have to come today. Mm -hmm. um, what we came to encounter was more of a systemic change, mm -hmm. but with the policies, guidelines, and rules, mm -hmm. uh, it, there is no option, mm -hmm. you must do it. And we did all this. Mm -hmm. I remember those times you used to queue in the cash office. Uh, they even used to get my salary from the cash office mm -hmm. most. Mm -hmm. But when this thing came, mm -hmm. I realized there was a lot of convenience mm -hmm. and security. I don't need to go there. Mm -hmm. I need to access my salary at those times. Mm -hmm. So in government, there is a, there is, there, there is a new way of moving it very fast mm -hmm. on the other side. Mm -hmm. So as we consider ourselves in the government on how to do to bring this cashless kind of environment. Mm -hmm. Also, we need also to look at our public and our users, at our people on the other side, mm -hmm. and give them incentives such a way that they can be able now to come in. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm now going to open this up to the floor. Uh, so if you have any questions or comments for, for the panelists, uh, this is uh, your opportunity to, to ask those questions. I don't know if there's a microphone. Is there somebody? Okay. So if you just put your hand up, we've got a gentleman over there and another one here and another one there. So we, we'll first take those three questions and then they will respond to those before we move to the next. So we can start with you, you sir. Yes. Good morning, everyone. My name is Andrew Mbuya, uh, CEO of Mobipesa. One of the applicants to join the uh, payment space as a service provider. Mm -hmm. Now, I notice most of the talk here on uh, the, the small ticket payments is focusing on POS mm -hmm. as one of the channels to execute the payment. Mm -hmm. But Kenya being one of the countries that has led in uh, adoption of the mobile phone technology within the payment space, mm -hmm. I believe there is a lot of potential mm -hmm. if policies can be set forth to enable uh, the MNOs working together with banks mm -hmm. and uh, the banking, the mentioning of uh, trust accounts requirement in execution of this. Mm -hmm. I don't know what kind of policies are being put to ensure that the ex already existing players, Safaricom, Airtel, in terms of their telecom network, mm -hmm. uh, and, and the other players together can, can be put or compelled to work together so that the cost of transaction in executing small ticket uh, payments can be lowered. Essence being, if you are to go USSD, for mothers who have to bonyeza seven, eight times in order to make a bill payment, mm -hmm. 
these things can be done in a two-step or a one-step process if you're using USSD, mm -hmm. but then you find the MNOs create barriers in terms of billing, mm -hmm. so that then you end up with a service that is way more expensive than the existing ones, and, and yet uh, customers are being flipped. So to CCK, to competition authority, to, to CBK and the rest of the players, what policies can be put together so that much as existing services have already taken a uh, step forward in moving this, rooms can be created for the new players to come in and provide even cheaper, more effective solutions in the market. Thank you. Okay. Um, if any of the panelists <laughs> want to take this one. Uh, Mr. Mwangi, thank you. Uh, one of the aspects that perhaps uh, will introduce the policies is for a long time government was not a player in that space. So uh, as a non-player, they, uh, uh, they, they don't understand your challenges. But now that government is also in the same area of trying to encourage more and more cashless payments, uh, I'm sure that discussion will come up and keep coming up. I think what one can do is also provide uh, a lot of feedback or consultations. Let's have discussions around this. Mm. Uh, this area will only grow. The challenge we had even initially was getting, say, a pay bill that is universal across all mobile networks. Uh, we have reached out to all mobile operators wanting a standard rate for government payers. Again, there have been some reluctance on that side. We are also looking at bringing on board all MVNOs so that all players that are uh, electronic money issuers can participate because at the end of the day, it's the choice of the uh, citizen. So some of those issues that were not party to any of these discussions uh, are coming to the fore. Mm -hmm. And as more and more counties engage more and more payment providers, mm -hmm. uh, we have no choice but to consider these implications to uh, the citizen and also ensure that it uh, makes commercial sense for uh, you to operate because again it's interesting where the fees are high but uh, the, the component of uh, revenue uh, payment providers are making is minuscule. It doesn't make it sustainable. Mm. Thank you. Maybe also I could just add, I, I'm aware that there is a mobile money association of Kenya which has just been formed, and all the mobile companies, are, not all, but the major ones are members, and they've started uh, conversations around interoperability and how to, to integrate uh, their payment systems. Um, also, the Payment Association of Kenya, which includes banks and non-banks, is also uh, uh, under formation this year. And I believe one of the, um, uh, what we call automated clearing houses will be for mob mobile payments. And I think that will help to advance uh, the cause of uh, mobile payments in Kenya quite rapidly. Uh, yes, there was a question. Morning, my name is Michael Nzomo from EATA. Yes. Uh, CBK is not here, but... Uh, I think, uh, based on your interactions, Victor and, uh, and Moya, mm -hmm. perhaps you could uh, just put in a few words about uh, Bitcoins as a payment uh, system, because there are companies that are coming into this market to use that platform as a, uh, as, as a means of payment. Thank you. OK, I'll, I'll ask Mr. Moya to comment on that. <laughs> okay. um, Probably not the right guy to answer this because I don't set policy. But uh, I dis I remember uh, a statement made by the central bank about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies not being legal tender. And so if you do it, um, apparently you are doing it at your own risk. Because <laughs> the central bank, who is mandated to manage currency in the country, do not recognize Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. So essentially, yes, it is probably one of those frontier areas where payments will start moving. But uh, unfortunately, the law follows technology. So people start something, they run around with it, and when it becomes uh, big or critical, that's when government steps in with regulation. So right now, you are in the wild, 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 wild west where you can just do whatever you want to do in cryptocurrency. The central bank doesn't recognize it yet until it gains uh, critical mass. That would be what I would say right now. Th thank you, Mr. Moya. Uh, there's an announcement here. All county executives uh, are asked to meet with the cabinet secretary at the VIP lounge immediately.
So if you're a county, a county executive, please, uh, you're, you're requested to meet with the cabinet secretary immediately uh, in the VIP lounge. Um, maybe also just to touch on, on, on Mr. Muya's comments, I think uh, these cryptocurrencies are, are maybe currencies of the future. And as happens in many cases uh, with new innovations, it takes time for regulation to, to accommodate them or to catch up with them. So I think this is just the beginning of our, of our conversation. I think the, the, the regulator has stated their position on, on these uh, currencies. And, and we'll see as, you know, it will take time. We'll see how it, it pans out maybe in two or three years. Uh, but with the current regulations, I, I, I think the position they've taken is probably the correct one. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, it's a good question, and I was expecting it anyway. <laughs> uh, with e-procurement, from where we started it, even with MDS, it was a thorn issue. Uh, people were resisting to go this way. But don't forget that we are bringing public into the participation of the IFMIS. And uh, that's the way to go, because today we are talking about digital, digitization and bridging the gap. Parastasis <coughs> kind of nature, there's a challenge as we roll out the e-procurement because in every system we have three Cs. We have currency, we have chart of account, and we have the calendar. And one of the, uh, two of the challenges is that uh, <coughs> for a status we are operating with a different chart of accounts. So integration and mapping is a whole total problem with the, with the doing. Again, we realize that some of you, you're operating on different calendars, not the same government a financial calendar we normally do. Currency, of course, is Kenya shillings. And if you're doing another currency, the system is able to do more uh, currency work. Right now, it has been a challenge for us in the capacity building because we are very few. But we have moved uh, with another approach that we have given this mandate. And right now, we are in that process of, de of developing this mandate of training to Kenya School of Government. We have done TOT, train of trainers, and uh, we are reviewing cal the curriculum, and very soon, the next financial year, you guys you don't need to be coming for treasure for training. You will just be going directly to Kenya School of Government because that's the accommodate, and I believe we shall be able to build the capacity on that. What you guys you need also to help us is also, you need also to come positively and play a role. Because what I've seen is that it's like uh, you have said this role belongs to the IFMIS alone. But we forget that all of us, we have an objective to bring this country to another level. So you also, you need also to come uh, strongly to help us also implement this by just mapping, translation, uh, preparing an environment, integration, all those things are things which are take and, uh, and give. And if you don't, uh, back up us then, it will take long. And I think I'll just mm. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chan. I will take uh, three more questions. As oh, sorry, I'm told we don't have time for any more questions, but my panelists, one more. Okay, we have time for one more question. Uh, yes, this gentleman over here. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Michael from Jomo Kenyatta University. 
probably mine might not be really a question, but maybe a checkpoint for National Treasury. Uh, I've seen a case where there's been a bit of a problem when using the IFMIS system, and probably there's an issue arising when you need to consult somebody. There's the line switching uh, issue whereby you switch to the person who can respond to you, and the response is a bit delayed or complicated since you end up not really being helped. Either the call get, gets dropped, or you're actually referred to another person who's not accessible. I think I've experienced that personally, and I'd really appreciate if it's checked. The HR. Thank you. Do you, do you want to comment on yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, I just comment on that. Uh, and uh, I appreciate your concern. Uh, this is not the first time it's coming. Actually, we went around doing a mountain and evaluation on IFMIS, and uh, that concern was heavily coming in. But uh, what I would need to say is that uh, we have an help desk whereby you do the switching off and we realize that the kind of the, uh, the lines are few. We are in initiative of increasing uh, the lines, the top free numbers, so that you can also, uh, we can have more for co called current kind of a communication. At the bench side, the, where you are give, going to be given information, we had very few headsets. I think we have increased to 15 of them. So I tend to believe we are still building capacity on that. At the same time, we have a slice works kind of online, whereby you can log in as a, as a user, you can put a ticket, your problems there, and then somebody on the other side will be seated and then uh, do uh, solve then respond. So you can also have that kind of account. We are still looking for an SMS kind of a, a mechanism whereby if your you problem being solved, an SMS can be triggered back to you and then be notified because we have realized that uh, we go ahead and solving the problems, but the people at the back, they don't know what the problem has been solved, and then it's taking too long. So we are also going, uh, announcing that kind of uh, activity and communication. And uh, thank you very much for that concern. Mm. Thank you, thank you. So I'll ask my panelists to uh, uh, wind up with their closing remarks, and you have two minutes just to summarize your, your thoughts uh, uh, on, on this uh, subject. And I'll use the same order, so I'll start with uh, Mr. Fidelis Muya. Uh, two minutes just to summarize your, your thoughts on this subject. Thank you, Victor. Um, just to summarize, uh, we are looking at a very bright future in terms of payments in Kenya. Um, very soon you will be able to actually move transactions across end to end once the mechanisms that we are putting in place uh, take effect. So we are looking at a very, very um, robust payments uh, space. We are currently working on setting the players together to agree on how to interoperate, agree on how to share systems and infrastructure. And what we are setting up is really what we are calling the standard gauge railway for payments. Once that comes in place, you will see the kind of transformation that we will make for payments mm -hmm. in the next three or four months. Uh, there is a lot going to happen. So please just be on the lookout for this and make sure you maximize and you get on the train. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mr. Muya. We'll, we'll wait for the train and get on board. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Mr. Dr. Kinara, you have two minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, oops, sorry. <coughs> okay. Um, uh, thank you, Victor. I also want to add my voice to what uh, uh, Mr. Muya is saying, but uh, I want to look at one area, and that's an area of culture change. Mm -hmm. You know, um, if, you, if you look at what happened in Europe, and as I said earlier, um, but there, there is a system that has existed. Mm -hmm. it's a, it is a post-gyro or post-gyro that has been in existence for a long time in UK, in, uh, in Germany, in the Nordic countries, and that gave birth to what we now call electronic bill payments. Mm -hmm. Because the post office was in the middle, mm -hmm. and it, it would be able to, 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 to get seamlessly, even when it was not on an electronic platform. It, it, so long as there is uh, a, a, an account with uh, the post office, mm -hmm. you would be able to, both, both, both sides would be able to get uh, this done without these people having to visit even that post office. Mm -hmm. We have an issue of culture because that makes it orderly. Mm -hmm. And where corruption is rife, mm -hmm. it is very difficult to get people to accept this order. Because
expose them, they will not get what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. We are lacking uh, the flag carrier mm -hmm. in this side. Mm -hmm. Who is to spearhead this culture change? Mm -hmm. I don't see anybody. I have not had whoever we can rely on to be able to get this campaign rolling so that we can get from where we are to where we want to be. I believe that uh, if Central Bank, I don't see them uh, doing any, any, any sort of campaign anywhere because I think they are dealing with very organized uh, uh, markets and they actually tell them, like they throw these things to uh, Kinamuya and tell them you do your bit. But they have left out a big junk of Kenyans who need to understand where they need to go. Somebody needs to take responsibility and do campaigns for an education for this culture change. Mm -hmm. I think that's what I would say for now, and that is, is, is missing. Thank you, thank you very much for those uh, remarks. Um, uh, Mr. Mwangi, two, min two minutes. Um, I think in closing, what I can add is the fact that as we move forward towards uh, more electronic payments within government, one of the major challenges that we have in government is uh, the types of records we hold. A uh, huge chunk of our records are in uh, paper manual form, and they're all over the place. So from your local chief to the local hospital, uh, records are all over the place. What we hope we can do over the next few years is to bring all this information together so that uh, when it comes to going to any hospital, as long as you have your national ID, they'll be able to pull up your health records. Uh, when it comes to on the spot fines, enforcement from NTSA, the police, etc., you'll be able to interact with the government seamlessly. Uh, we've been uh, lagging behind the private sector. A uh, huge chunk of uh, private sector players embarked on this journey a while back. Government is just getting on it. Uh, we intend to bring all services, be they 5,000, etc., and uh, ensure that uh, it is convenient for the citizen to make payment, uh, but more so to receive service. Uh, in areas such as uh, immigration, we've had uh, interesting success. We have immigration offices in all our missions globally, but uh, with the introduction of e-visa, we've had some uh, significant support from within the Department of Immigration uh, making life easier for them in terms of uh, accounting, issuance of documents. Uh, if you look at NTSA, for instance, they've had to put in place some stopgap measures. Previously, you need to take, you need to, you had to take paper uh, for your driving test. They are now using uh, mobile phones and tablets, and this is uh, the challenge we have between. Uh, mapping your payment to service delivery and ensuring that uh, the service is delivered. So as we move forward, uh, feel free to get back to us where we feel we can do it uh, in a better way, but also be understanding in the sense that uh, there is a lot to be done and we are just getting started. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Mwangi. Uh, Mr. Chalo? Oh, yes. <coughs> I think much has been, uh, been spoken. And I would wish to summarize all this discussion in a, in a form of a challenge. And I want to throw the challenge to all of us, not you, not me. And I would say, all of us, we have a wake up for the future. And we have to put this creation of the future in our hands. Let us celebrate, be heroes, when that future comes. Thank you. Thank you. Th I, I really want to thank this panel. I think, you know, it has been a very informative, very interesting, and uh, we've all learned, uh, you know, some new developments that we were not aware of, and I believe this is a very exciting uh, space for, <coughs> for innovation, uh, for investment, and for growth. So I want you to join me in con just a round of applause for my panel, <laughs> and thank, thank them very much for the session, and I'll hand over to, to the MC. Thank you. I would also ask that we give a round of applause to uh, the moderator. 
he was under very strict instructions to keep time and he has, so thank you very much, uh, Victor. Um, so now we're just headed out to um, our tea break, but uh, a few announcements before that. Um, after tea break, we're going to have the Innovations Award uh, by Microsoft. Um, and then after that, we're going to uh, have the Enterprise Kenya um, session. But I want to take this opportunity to once again thank all our sponsors for making this possible. Um, and uh, this is us also being nice to you, so next year we can uh, make the same call. Uh, but to the Ministry of ICT, the ICT Authority, the Communications Authority, Microsoft, Dimension Data and Cisco, Oracle, Seacom, Airtel, Konza Technopolis, Safaricom, Huawei, Intel, Liquid Telcom, Tespoc, Telcom Kenya, Compilinx, and Kenik. Another round of applause to all our sponsors, please. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. Uh, as we mentioned, tomorrow we shall have a CSR uh, activity at Kwale Girls High School. This is kindly sponsored by Huawei and Safaricom. Uh, please remember to give your donations uh, of books um, at the tent. Moving forward, all sessions shall start on time. Uh, hopefully everyone will be in the room, so we are um, uh, re respectful to the next sessions and we uh, keep time. Um, and then the afternoon sessions, we shall still have the breakout, so we, I will give those announcements um, as we move. So right now, let's head out to uh, tea break. We have exactly 25 minutes, and then another two minutes of walking in, and the Innovations Award shall start at exactly 10.30 um, a.m. Thank you very much, and see you after break. Mm -hmm.